Hey everyone, the name is Eric Dorr and this is a follow-up from my discussion on the INFJ door slam that I made many years ago. What surprises me with the INFJ door slam is that all 16 personalities will and do end friendships and end relationships. Any personal type can decide to end a friendship or relationship and most personal types can also do so in a rather dramatic fashion, quickly from 0 to 100 deciding to shut down or shut off all contact with a person. In the way I see it is, it seems to hurt people more and it seems to be a bigger deal when the INFJ decides to do this. And it has to do with the INFJ's relationship and nature of how INFJs form attachments and connections with other people, or rather, the fact that they don't. So, why do you think that you decided to end your past relationship? Why do you think you decided to door slam the other person if you did as an INFJ? What do you think was the reason behind your actions? Now I've learned many interesting things since I made that video and I've also followed the reactions that I got on this video and something that really stood out to me was that most INFJs feel that their decision to door slam their friends or family members or uh, past partners was warranted, was done with good reason and for a good purpose for the right cause. So what I want to talk about in today's video is uh, actually something interesting and that is why do we fixate so much on an INFJ's ability to end or move away in, or move on in friendships or relationships? Why is it so dramatic when an INFJ decides to end a friendship? The fascinating thing that I've discovered when I thought about the INFJ door slam is that I think people tend to assume that the INFJ, because they have very few outward boundaries to other people, because the INFJ tends to demonstrate high openness to others, People tend to assume that uh, or take for granted that the INFJ's attention and presence will always be there. That means we tend to assume that because the INFJ seems so nice to everyone and so open to listen to and hear and relate to and connect with me, I have a right to the INFJ's attention and if they don't give me that attention, well, I must have committed a terrible crime because they can give that attention to anyone but they don't seem to want to give that to me so why don't they want to give that to me is it because i'm a terrible person is it because i'm a demon or a monster or something you know a door slam can come out of a state of resentment or anger it can feel that for the infj as if the other person had used them or manipulated them or that the other person wasn't being authentic or it can be that the infj was uh, being very helpful and being very supportive but the other person started to use the infj so I think we should kind of rewind the clock to the beginning of that friendship or that relationship to see why it happened, why INFJs tend to struggle with people that uh, use them or why so many INFJs tend to feel that they meet people and attract people into their life who they feel are narcissistic or selfish or uh, even sociopathic. Why do INFJs end up connecting with people who then uh, need to be shut out or removed. So my discovery is that unlike potentially some ideas that we attract what we deserve or what we think we need, you know, I think the primary reason why the INFJ attracts these kind of people is because the INFJ attracts everyone. It's not that the INFJ single-handedly only attracts narcissists or bad people into their life. It's that the INFJ attracts everyone into their life. Only the narcissist and the sociopath is going to try to get a better deal out of you than what you are comfortable to give. The INFJ demonstrates a high level of social openness. That means openness to listen to and empathize with other people. Openness to uh, give other people space and attention. INFJs are very easy friends to have because INFJs make few demands of you. They are very relaxing to be around. They're usually very chill and easygoing friends. And that means as a partner to an INFJ or as a friend to an INFJ, it's easy to feel like the INFJ is just a relaxing, comfortable presence. Somebody that you can talk to about anything. Somebody that you can uh, always go to for help. Somebody that will always support you. The thing is, when the INFJ does this to you, it's not because, uh, you know, it's 
they're trying to do something nice for you. It's not because they're trying to please you. Or it's not because they're trying to do something for you. The simple reason why INFJs do this is because this is what they want you to do for them. INFJs demonstrate in how they care for you and in how they support you, how they want to be cared for and how they want to be supported. Now, that doesn't necessarily mean that the INFJ expects of you to listen to all their problems or that the INFJ expects that you will always be there for them when you call or things like that. Actually, on the contrary, because the INFJ will rarely do this, will rarely demand this of you, that's a sign that they also don't want that from you either. But that means is the INFJ is looking for a kind of friendship that is spontaneous and uh, rid of unnecessary or difficult attachments or clinginess. So what that means is when the INFJ feels that the other person is trying to be possessive of them or demanding of their attention, that's when the INFJ starts to consider the door slam. And of course, that's not an immediate reaction to the situation. INFJs in a situation may be willing to cross boundaries for themselves or to uh, stress themselves out or to drain themselves of energy because in the moment, it's okay, it's fine. In the situation, it can happen that people need you and that we need support each other and that things happen. And the INFJ might even be okay with this. The problem is when it becomes prolonged. And the problem is when you start getting attached to the INFJ's presence. So when the INFJ is, for example, entering into a compromise with you, for example, you might both want to go on vacation and you might want to go on vacation together and the INFJ might want to go to Portugal and you want to go to Spain. Well, the INFJ will probably consider what your needs early in that discussion and will come up with some form of a compromise. The problem here it becomes if you don't like that compromise. The INFJ has already gone out of their way and made a 50% compromise on their original plans. They've already thought of what you need and they've already thought of a promote proposal that will work for both of you. But you look at that proposal and you go, hey, uh, this is not exactly what I was looking for. Maybe I can get the INFJ to come even more to my side. So sometimes the thing can be that uh, uh, while the INFJ enters into the discussion as a diplomat trying to find an agreement that both sides will be good with, the other person goes into the discussion as maybe a sales agent rather, trying to uh, find or market their own decision or opinion or trying to get the best deal possible. So uh, the INFJ goes in as a diplomat trying to avoid war between Russia and uh, Finland, uh, while <laughs> you go in as maybe uh, the Russian trying to go and uh, get as much of a good deal as possible out of the situation. Maybe um, Finland can get rid of some of its land over to me in Russia. Uh, you know, like this is a poor example, but the point is like uh, the INFJ is trying to avoid war or conflict while you are trying to uh, bring yourself uh, personal benefits and gratification and success. So this is also uh, perhaps why the INFJ might find themselves more prone to dealing with narcissistic or sociopathic individuals because uh, while most people will see uh, your INFJ diplomacy compromise as, oh, tempting, but meh, I'll just go do my own thing. Uh, a narcissist or a sociopath might see that compromise as, huh, that's an interesting deal. What if I could get even more? You know, <laughs> what if I can get this person to go all the way to Spain? Well, if they've already come half the way, maybe I can get them to come even further, even closer, you know. So uh, the sociopath is probably going to be the one that will bargain the most for your time and attention and will make the most demands out of you as an INFJ. So what that means is uh, while most people will be happy and appreciative of what you do and your energy and attention, only the narcissist or the sociopath is going to be thinking about how they can get the better end of the bargain. How can I get even more attention? You know, being listened to is great, you know, like how can I get somebody to listen to me even more, you know, like... Uh, how can I get them to be even more helpful? You know, it's real nice that they came and helped me move. How can I get them to also get my furniture up? You know, like, <laughs> so that's uh, like the idea of the narcissist. They're thinking about and they're engaging with the, a biological, it's basically a biological adaptation technique. For the narcissist or the sociopath, they've been trained to think that they have to constantly battle and fight for attention and space and energy and gratification of their personal needs. So they're only thinking about and using that adaptation response towards you. 
So what can you do as an INFJ and what should you do about it? What can you do about the fact that you're so open? Should you be less open? You know, like, because uh, something that can happen is like, you might end up feeling like, hey, uh, being so nice to people and being so open to people is never working out for me, you know? I keep uh, getting used, people keep manipulating me, people keep using my kindness against me, you know, too. And uh, so I wonder, should I simply stop? You know, like, should I uh, stop being nice to people? Should I present a cold front? Should I be rude to people? Should I stop listening to others? Well, I wouldn't want to do that, you know? Like, it feels like the wrong answer. You don't want to do that. You don't want to become cold. You don't want to shut people off or to become detached because it's not natural for you. The natural response for an INFJ is to be warm. So when an INFJ is not warm, well, then something is definitely wrong. Typically, the INFJ will be super sweet and super considerate. Uh, and that's just going to be their nature, natural state. The thing is, uh, when you try to force this out of the INFJ, that's when it becomes less sweet. So INFJs become gradually less warm and less empathetic the more they feel that you are pushing their empathy, you're pushing their sweetness. And there's a simple explanation for this. And that's, you know, um, if, if the INFJ picks up on inauthenticity or if the INFJ feels that they're being manipulated to be, be empathetic or considerate, most likely they're going to think, wait a minute, what's happening here? You know, like, why is this person doing this? And then that's going to cause the INFJ to feel that, okay, I'm going to have to be very cold and very dismissive in the situation. I'm going to have to let go of that empathy and I'm going to have to put on a cold front for this person because clearly... They're trying to get something from me here. They're trying to push me. They're trying to uh, force something out of me. You know, if I'm if they're trying to force it, well, I don't want it. <laughs> I don't want to do it anymore. Um, so the INFJ seems to be looking for is a form of non-attached friendship. That means uh, the INFJ is trying to look for a situation where care and empathy can be given naturally and freely in the situation uh, and in an open manner and without boundaries or without. Uh, need for boundaries if possible. It seems the INFJ dislikes boundaries and dislikes setting and clarifying boundaries and prefers the friendship to be natural. And that means, you know, the INFJ will develop late in life the ability to set boundaries, but would prefer not to do so even if they can set boundaries. The INFJ would prefer if other people simply didn't push them to the point where they needed to set boundaries in the first place. That means the INFJ would prefer if uh, you didn't try to bargain or negotiate with them further than what they are already comfortable to do so. And that the INFJ would prefer that you didn't call them too often or uh, didn't uh, uh, rely on them too much for emotional validation or empathy. And that you would simply let the INFJ be who they are and how they feel. It also goes to say that the INFJ is not always going to be positive or great or amazing obviously when an INFJ is more stressed they're going to be more cold and obviously when the INFJ is not feeling well yeah they're going to have less empathy for other people or they will be less occupied with you and if they give you attention they're going to look annoyed and they're going to be more short or rushed or they're going to have this angry look in their face because they're kind of focused on something else that is taking up a lot of their energy and now they have to focus on something else and that's making them overwhelmed so what can you do about that? Well, I think just as you know that anyone, you know, can have a bad day, just as you can have a bad day, you can expect that the INFJ is going to have bad days too. And in those situations, it's typically better to let the INFJ have their space and uh, to wait until they're ready to say, hey, I see that you're busy. Should we meet up another time or talk a bit later? You know, um, I see that uh, you're not uh, like really there right now or that you're like a bit preoccupied with something, you know, can I do something for you or... You know, like just check in with them, you know, like having these check ins, I think is really important. Now, when we come to the door slam matter, let's close this up with a discussion on the door slam in general. Do you think that the door slam is a viable strategy? Do you think it's the right thing to do? Do you think it's good to door slam other people? The way I see it, it's uh, neither good or bad. You know, it uh, happens. It does happen that sometimes uh, we feel that we have to choose and make distinctions in friendships and who we hang out with and when and uh, we might not have the energy or space for a certain person at a certain time and in that sense a door slam might be necessary and I think you know like ideally you don't want to make it about the other person necessarily 
it's not always that uh, you're door slamming a person because they're bad people. A lot of time it's that because you're door slamming them because you're not happy with the dynamic that you two have with each other. And that uh, should be fair enough because uh, we all are selective at friendships. You know, you wouldn't befriend just about anyone. Nobody wants to be friends with everyone and not everyone is going to enjoy the dynamic they have with every single person in the world, you know. Every personality type can, once again, choose their own friendships and relationships. And so, just as they can, you have the right as an INFJ to do the same. And even if you were outwardly out open or uh, even if you were sweet or kind or empathetic in the situation or in the beginning of that friendship, you have a right to change your mind or to decide to move on or to prioritize other friendships or to uh, do things differently if the dynamic changes in a direction you're not happy with. Similarly, uh, the INFJ is a late processor of their own emotions. That means they'll first process other people's emotions and then when they have space and time, they'll process their own emotions. And that means in the situation, the INFJ might be okay with compromise, but over time, the INFJ might check in with themselves and might go, hey, this is actually not that comfortable for me or this is actually not that nice for me and I don't really feel happy with this. So the INFJ will typically um, have to make choices based on that and you know when that happens when you recognize that you're not happy with the dynamic you have two choices and that's like you know that you can think about you know can I change this dynamic can I make this better can I talk with the other person to resolve it do I want to do that uh, or do I want to cut that person off and it's up to you whether you want to deal with that and it's not a reflection of being selfish uh, at least it's not a reflection of being selfish in an unhealthy manner you know, there are selfish decisions that you can make that are completely fine because, you know, ultimately, if you'd make the selfless decision, you'd be unhappy and the other person would probably be unhappy too. So sometimes being selfish and choosing your own friendships and choosing the kind of relationships that you want is the best choice for both you and the other person. So in that sense, take the time to think about what you need in a friendship or relationship or what's important to you and uh, think about if it's possible to have that dynamic with the other person and then decide from there on what do you want to do for yourself because ultimately you know any kindness and any care that you give us an INFJ and any openness any time you or attention you give to another person it has to come from yourself because you want to because you think it's a right thing to do because you think it's a good person because you care about the other person because you value the situation or dynamic or because you think it's going to be good for both of you in the longer perspective if it's not good for you or for the other person to, to do so well, then, by all means, let go of it. Or not. What do you think? Feel free to leave your thoughts in the comments down below. Thank you so much for watching, and I hope to see you all in the next video.